Good morning, my name is Jose Velasco. I am with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And today I'm gonna to be talking about the omnidirectional optical communicator that we have developed at JPL for space applications. We refer to this technology as the Interspacecraft Omnidirectional Optical Communicator, in short, ISAC. So let's talk about the ISAC. The outline of this presentation includes a description of the ISAC, I present design and testing results. I also introduce Q4, a technology demonstration mission that we're proposing to demonstrate the capabilities of ISAC. And I'll finalize the presentation with a couple of conclusions. Uh, I would like to acknowledge our collaborators in this effort, both from JPL, and from University of California, Irvine. Also, I want to acknowledge uh, funding from uh, the NASA's uh, Small Spacecraft Technology Program. This is a three-year project that ended about a year ago and was sponsored by the NASA's SSTP. So what is the ISAC? So the ISAC is a new technology that we have developed for small sats specifically, even though it could also apply to large spacecraft. So here in this animation, I show the ISAC, you can see in the forefront, and it is, it's installed in this case, in multiple spacecraft, and this spacecraft are forming a swarm in this case. So the goal with the ISAC is to interconnect this spacecraft optically. The challenges or the main goals for this development were the following. First, we wanted to achieve gigabit per second communications. Two, we wanted to obtain full sky coverage. So we could talk to any spacecraft in the surroundings or the main spacecraft. And then we want to achieve multiple simultaneous links uh, with the ISAC as well. So the philosophy of the design, as you will see in later slides, uh, follow these three main uh, three main goals. So without further ado, let me introduce you the ISAC. So this is a, a, a video of the ISAC in our laboratories. You can see it presents uh, as a spherical body. It's, it is actually a truncated dodecahedron body. That means it has uh, 32 facets and 60 vertices. So we locate detectors on the vertices and telescopes, transmit telescopes on the facets of the ISAC. This is another picture of uh, ISAC, still picture. And you can see the pin diode detectors, we have an array of detectors. So we can detect the signals from any direction. And then transmit telescopes that we can use to, to close the link, basically. So we use the detectors to receive the signals, the incoming signals. We calculate the direction where the signal comes from. And that is, uh, we can get the asymmetric elevation to so that direction. And then we can select the appropriate telescope to close the link to, so we can shoot back a signal and uh, establish a duplex uh, link. These are some simulation results of uh, what's called link budget. How far can we go with this ISAC? So this kind of answers that question. And, and here you can see the vertical is the required optical power per telescope and the horizontal is distance. For instance, you can see that uh, we can achieve, in this case, at, with zero dB watt, which is one watt of power, you can get 200 kilometers uh, distance. Uh, and that would be at one gigabit per second. Also, you can see if you go a little farther, the same one watt, you could go a thousand kilometers. And then in this case, the rate would be 10 megabits per second. So you can see, uh, the ranges of interest for ISAC go from tens of kilometers to thousands of kilometers. And the following uh, slides I will show 
for uh, testing, design and testing results that we obtained uh, during the project. Uh, that include, those include uh, transmit telescopes, beam steering, angle of arrival, and data rate testing. So there, this is a view of the telescope. You can see uh, on the upper right, that's a geometry of uh, this miniature telescopes we designed for ISAC. Internally, this telescope, you can see a side view, internal view, has a laser diode, has a collimator, and fixed mirror, and what we call a fast steering mirror. So this mirror here allows this out beam that's coming out of the telescope to be steered with a, an angular uh, steering range from that goes almost to plus minus uh, 30 degrees. Other views of the telescope, you can actually see the, on the upper right, you can see the mirror the steel, one of the steel mirrors we are looking at, that's a MEMS mirror that is driven by a DAC and digital analog converter chip that has 16-bit resolution. What that means is that we can steer the beam with resolution one arc second. Here is a video of testing of one of the telescopes. This was an earlier experiment. You can, we commanded the mirror to steer the beam in circles. And you can see that we achieved that successfully. This is another test. Uh, in this case, we irradiate the ISAC with a laser, with a light in this case, uh, flashlight basically. And then what ISAC does, calculates the angle of arrival, selects the appropriate uh, telescope, and then shoots a laser back. But in this case, what we do is for the purpose of this demonstration, we offset that proton beam by 90 degrees. So you can see it on that white screen. But the important thing to watch is how that laser on the screen mimics the motion of the flashlight. So you can see we're steering, the, moving the flashlight like a spacecraft, a moving scape, emulating a moving spacecraft at a long distance. And you can see that ISAC detects the signal and then generates a, a laser that mimics the motion of the flashlight. So what that shows is shows acquisition and tracking actually uh, provided by the ISAC. This is another testing beyond what we actually did before. We wanted to do testing to determine what is the quality or the accuracy of the angle of arrival calculation. So we should, in this case, we generated uh, about eight inch diameter beam, and then we created the ISAC with that beam. So the ISAC is mounted on this pan and tilt unit, and we can rotate the pan and tilt unit, uh, which has an encoder embedded. So we can know the, uh, the true position of the ISAC. And then as we rotate it, we also calculate the uh, angle of arrival and compare that the angle of arrival versus the encoders information. With that, we can get the accuracy of our calculation. So this is a result of, you can see the measure angle of arrival in the vertical, and the horizontal is the commanded uh, angle to the PTU unit. So the two of them should overlap, basically. So in this case, they do, and we can actually measure the accuracy. So the accuracy of our angle of arrival calculation in this case is a few milli degrees. So we're improving that. A couple of ISACs under testing in our lab. Uh, more testing, this uh, shows more the steering testing. This is speed testing. So actually we had transmitter, a receiver, and then we communicate between wirelessly between the two. And then we change the distances and adjust the speed and measure what's called the BER, bit error rate for each condition. So in this case, this testing uh, was for a BER of one 10 to minus eight. You can see the on the middle, this is called eye diagram, which is just very good quality. Typically you want a nice opening in the middle that, that shows it a good quality uh, communications, basically, especially uh, as I indicated before with a BER or 10 to the minus eight. 
this is actually the, the line model that we are actually building. And so you can see that is the ISAC with the detectors and the telescopes. Because obviously it requires a processor. So we are using, uh, in this case, a uh, Kintix 7 FPGA. Because uh, in the lower part, you see this uh, PCB board here in green. So that is what we call a mixed signal board, has ADCs, DACs. So it receives the information from the detectors, the ISAC detectors, and then calculates the FPGA, calculates the angle of arrival, and then sends commands to the telescopes via that board as well. And so the FPGA is to be connected to a flight computer. You can see in this case, we're showing a flight computer. And we're planning to use two buses, one relatively conventional using uh, RS422, and then the other one is to use Ethernet. So that will be for fast communications uh, with between the ISAC FPGA and the flight computer. So that's our next call. We want to demonstrate this capability in space. And for that purpose, we are proposing this uh, mission called Q4 that, that consists of four CubeSats you can see them here. It's a LEO mission, 400 kilometers. And the purpose of the Q4 mission is to test the ISA capabilities. So in, in this arrangement, we have a, a CubeSat in the middle called the leader, and then three CubeSats around it, which are called the followers. So this is the uh, Q4 CubeSat with all the avionics and components that we have selected. You can see an animation the uh, 6U Q4 keeps that. And you can see the ISAC on top. We've done some orbital dynamic calculations using the Clohesi Wilshire equations, basically to determine the motions of the three followers with respect to the leader. And then if you solve the sequences of motion, you get the X, Y, Z position of the follower with respect to the leader. And that's why I plug it here. So depending on these various parameters you select, you can actually change the orbit. It could be, it could be, uh, could be set up uh, horizontal, could be perpendicular with respect to the ground. And you can also adjust the distance between the leader and the followers. So this is actually an SDK simulation where you can see the, the leader in the middle and the followers around this. You can see the followers rotate with respect to the leader as the four spacecraft orbit Earth. So that's what we want. So we want the leader to talk to the followers and then be interconnected optically. And then as they all rotate, we, we can measure the quality of the communications, including the BER. This is another simulation, and now you can see the motion is perpendicular to the ground. It's just by selection, by selecting the uh, phases, uh, the injection phases or the spacecraft with respect to the, the followers with respect to the leaders, you can achieve all these types of configurations. So that's what we're pursuing and hopefully in the coming months we can obtain funding to pursue this Q4 mission. Yeah, lastly, uh, where we in the past months we also tested uh, what we call a swarm simulator, which is the key for simulator in our labs. So we have four ISACs or four CubeSats, ISACs, one in the middle, the leader, and the three uh, around the followers. And we can emulate this motion, this cyclical motion, and then the goal is to measure uh, the quality or the connectivity. Uh, and measure the VR and measure various links as, uh, with different speeds and so on. In conclusion, uh, I would like to say that uh, we uh, have developed this uh, cutting edge optical communicator that should enable uh, future missions, including constellations and swarms. We presented uh, the same considerations of the various parts of the ISAC. And, and also we presented Q4 uh, technology demonstration for ISAC. So as I indicated before, we think the ISAC has tremendous potential, including uh, as an enabler for future swarm and constellations. 
uh, not only on low Earth orbit, but in cislunar, Mars and space and beyond. With that, thank you very much for your attention. And I look forward to any questions you might have. Thank you.